You always make eyes at the camera. Ooh. Hello, everybody. I'm Will. And I'm Kristen. And so I'm watching this show, your twice weekly pop culture podcast, where we talk about movies, TV, music, and more. As always, this is a spoiler show, so you have been warned. Um, on today's episode, we are going to have a conversation about the new Disney Pixar film, Luca. Taylor. <laughs> Not a fan of that. I know your problem. You got a Bruno in your head. A Bruno? Say, Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Louder. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Can you still hear him? Nope. Just you. Good. Now hang on. So, this is on Disney Plus. Yep. At no additional cost. Correct. Kind of like how Soul yeah. was. And to show my hand, that all checks. Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> I am the only one in the house that liked this movie. I had a great time. <laughs> did you really? I really did. I thought okay. it was precious. Uh huh. I loved it. Elaborate. It was so cute. Their little friendship was cute. I understand criticisms because there are things that I wish would have happened in this movie too, but I just mostly thought it was really cute. Like a, you know, literal fish out of water thing. Thought all the designs were really great. The music cues were fun because it was always like really kind of on the nose Italian pop songs. And yeah, I thought the whole thing was great. The like betrayal moment was really good. And then the making up moment was really good. I really liked it. Um, I loved the cat that looked like Hitler. <laughs> Machiavelli. He was special because you pointed out that the cat had chest hair. He had a little swirl. Tough. Yeah. A little swirl of chest hair. It was so weird and cute. That was funny. I mean, I think it's a good, I think it's a fine movie. Yeah. I think plenty of people will like it. Uh, Probably more so kids. Yeah. It was very well-worn territory. Of course. Well, but I mean, sometimes these movies can really, I mean... <laughs> Soul was not. <laughs> it was True. even we thought we found it to be mediocre story wise in its success yeah. rate, but it was not like, oh, this again. So, OK, <laughs> that's what I'll say is I do get the feeling that Pixar the last few rounds, like basically the last Pixar movie that actually moved me like emotionally and existentially was Inside Out. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I do think they are in a sort of nebulous, iffy place with their the quality of their content. But I just still had a really nice time. Like, I think that this was more charming and cute and like beautifully done than like cars. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, this is certainly not the worst Pixar movie. So I have a bit of a reputation for not liking Pixar, and I bristle at that every time because I, I don't like the implication or I don't like I don't like how it sounds to say I don't like it because I do. I like Toy Story one and four. I like you like three. It's OK. I love three. I like it. Yes, the three is good. I like Finding Nemo. I like Inside Out. I like, I mean, I've liked all of them as they've come out, but there is something about them, and maybe it's the fact that they are so, <laughs> they're so sexless, there's no glamour factor, there's no, like, I'm more of a sweeping fairy tale type person, sure. and they tend to be a little bit more like, burr, 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 like, I mean, I think, like, kind of yeah. rascally, maybe. For me, they, like, make, they generally make up with that for that with the, like, the deep scope of their storytelling. Mm -hmm. And I will agree that this one is very surface level. It's very what it looks like, what it seems like. There's nothing that comes out and smacks you in the face as being weird or different. And like up to and including the like two little old village women who are the sea monsters mm -hmm. all along. Like none of that is surprising. I, and, and I want to make it clear. First of all, we're not critics. We don't consider ourselves critics. What we do, the purpose of this show is we like to talk about movies these are our personal feelings. These are what we think. And so if I don't like a movie in, in a general sense, I'm not saying that it's a bad movie. Sure. Sometimes I am. But it, it's more so it just it honestly did nothing for me. I it, it I know. OK. Do you want me to just say it? What? They should have been gay. Yeah. 
They should have been boyfriends. And I knew they weren't going to do that, yeah. but I thought they were going, I thought it was going to be more, more blatant or okay. more. I thought that's what this was about. And well, OK, the only thing I'll say in the defense of the movie is they didn't actually do a romantic thing with Luca and Julia. They I mean, they didn't as in there was not a kiss because they were children. But I mean, he left um, Alberto. Alberto to go off with Julia. So well, he wants I, to go to school. Uh, I don't think school is code for heterosexuality. I mean, <laughs> Isn't it? They hugged each other so hard they cried before he left on the train. I don't know. I I, I liked the first twenty minutes, mm. and then it becomes, and then it turns into a movie about a race. And I didn't care for Escol. I didn't understand his role as the villain. No, he was terrible. I didn't understand who this presumably adult. He was older than they were. He was definitely older than they were. I think he was still supposed to be a teenager, but like a late teenager because he kept on claiming he was 16. So I oh, think he was okay. like 19 or 20 at the most. I was dozing off a little bit yeah. in the middle, but I just didn't like the the angle with him. I, I liked her father. Yeah, Massimo. Although they didn't really do a lot with him. Not enough. And he also, his design was like almost wholesale stolen from the dad from Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. It, 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 his design felt unfinished to me. A little. And the, but it was like the eye, the like eyebrows uh -huh. that are covering his eyes and then like the, the like not very emotionally expressive mouth. It was, it was literally the dad from Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. I did appreciate the, the look of this one. It was slightly different. It yeah. wasn't the standard... It wasn't wasn't the standard Disney look, and it wasn't the standard Pixar look, yeah. and it almost looked claymation. It was. Will said that's the same thing too. That they had there kind was like of a Wallace and Gromit, Wallace and Gromit quality. I definitely agree. I liked the the visual vibe of this movie a ton. Not only because they're in Italy, which is obviously stunningly beautiful, but it was very. You're right. It was visually and artistically different than a lot of the Pixar movies generally are, and. I liked that a lot. That that went miles for me with this movie mm -hmm. because when they're when they are the sea monsters, monster is such a I hated that. They, yeah. why they weren't just calling them mermaids or whatever. Yeah. I, I hated the the calling them monsters. It didn't yeah. work. Everybody would like even they were like, we are sea monsters. And I was like, I don't but you're not monsters though. They were you're just like creatures. Humanoid. Yeah, you're like sea creatures. Regardless, I liked the designs of them and how they were different. And it, it made me want variation. Like, yeah. I felt like they should be but one type of sure. fantasy creature in a world with, like, nine other examples. Well, and that's something that I would argue that the movie, the Pixar movie we preferred last year, Onward, <laughs> did well. It mm -hmm. had many creatures, many types of If they were in Onward, I would have liked it better. But Right. And I'm, I'm very serious. And I... I I really want to stress that, like, I knew because this is a Disney Pixar movie, I knew it wasn't going to be Call Me By Your Name. Like, I of knew course. we weren't getting that. But it was, exactly. though. Exactly. And so I'm like, why would you write yourself into this corner? Yeah. Like, yeah. why would you make that your thesis statement yeah. and then abandon it a half hour into the movie? Like, I really... it's, like it is set in Italy. It's two young men. You know, bonding together. One more worldly than the other. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> bonding together over a shared adventure. Sleeping and together. Sleeping together. <laughs> Under a, the stars. There's or a girl, anchovies. Yeah, there's a girl that's like maybe getting in the way. I, I totally, they, he leaves on a goddamn train. Like, I 100% agree with you. It, it was definitely, it was too similar to be as non committal. Not, not the same. I, I definitely agree with that. And I'm not trying to go. And, and the thing is, it's like it, it, it. It's one of my favorite things about you is it is to to a very large extent. You have a tendency to just accept things for what they are. You yeah. have a tendency to sort of like sit down comfortably and get lost into a story for an hour and a half. I, and so like, I'm not trying to take that away from you. No, no, no. I mean, I, I don't know how many times I'll rewatch this movie, but that is something. Now, I would put it on because it's. It's pretty. pretty. Yeah. But that's the thing that I don't know how much we've explained it on the podcast. Like movies are the thing like movies and TV are like the thing I love the most. Like it's what I want to spend my time doing. It's mm -hmm. the only thing I want to spend my time doing. So I to a certain extent 
feel like I owe it to the people who spent their time and money making this stuff to just let it and wash was, over me. And there was a lot of quality work, yeah. but it just it I it didn't it didn't come together for me. And because I also think Maya Rudolph and Jim Gaffigan weren't used well. We, uh, weirdly cast. Also, I will say, though, for me, for my money, the chemistry between Jacob Tremblay and Jack Dylan Grazer was mm -hmm. chef's kiss. I mean, they are both very gifted actors in the first place. And Jack Dylan Grazer is very good at his thing he does. So I thought the two of them were totally excellent. But I agree. Maya Rudolph and Jim Gaffigan were weirdly cast as the parents in the first place. And then weirdly used. And then very weirdly used. Where like 90% of their content in this movie is just like finding unique ways to throw water on children. <laughs> well, they were just, too, they were too worried for no reason. Like, also, and I'm sorry, where is uh, Eugene Levy to be throwing water on unsuspecting people in this movie, a la Splash? You know what I mean? Dousing them. Yeah. In. And then there, there's a grandmother character, and then there is a a, a, as hilarious as it is totally unnerving. Yeah. Uncle character, Uncle Ubo. Ugo. Ugo. Who is like an angler fish. Uh huh. And transparent and has a weak heart that has to be resuscitated. You can see it. So hello, Luca. Is it a nice to meet you? Luca, I need you to punch his heart. That's right, the red thing. Punch it. Harder! Oh. <laughs> Thanks for that. Too much oxygen up here. Not like the deep, as you'll learn. <laughs> so they make Luca punch him in his heart, which is bonkers. <laughs> and so it's like to be teased with those elements yeah. and then do nothing with them. I was like, this is so strange. And and I also want to <laughs> I want to be clear since we're talking about the the gay stuff and call me by your name. I, I don't think either of them should have been coming on each other. <laughs> Or in any kind of know, underwater any fruit. Any kind of, kind of <laughs> underwater fruit. I, I, I think it should have been more innuendo. I think it of should course. have been more subtle. Yeah. But because it's like Raya. Oh. They were gay. That was pretty. <laughs> yeah. That's what I wanted. Yeah. And this to me felt like it was for children. Sure. Like children. Yeah. And also the thing with um, oh, uh, Alberto, right? Yeah. Uh, the thing with his dad was weird. Yeah, okay, that okay. I will agree with that. I think certain story elements of this movie felt half baked in a way that I have not come to expect. Well, I've come to, come to expect it. I've come to expect it more from Pixar lately. But it's like I remember when you went to see a Pixar movie and there just weren't plot holes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then it's like he just his dad up and left him because he was like ready to live in the world. And I'm just like, huh. It, I kept waiting for the third act of that story and yeah. it just never came. There wasn't and one. Because I was, like, at the beginning, I was like, oh, well, hey, you guys, I guess his dad is dead. And then mm -hmm. it turns out, no, he just fucking abandoned him completely. Very weird. Yeah. Do you want to talk about all of the noodles? I <laughs> want nothing more. Okay, so the other day, my parents had nothing in their house. Uh -huh. But they had fettuccine uh -huh. and a package of frozen cream spinach. Ooh. <laughs> And just enough cream cheese. Boss. <laughs> it was so good. So good. I believe it. was it. so good. I was like. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so that's kind of what, because it was pesto, what they yeah. were having a lot. Mm -hmm. But even that, there was no variation. To the, yeah. It was just different pasta shapes. Yeah. Because you were like, oh, it just is covered in olive oil. And I was like, yeah. And yes, that is delicious. But we could, is it my Miyazaki? Yeah. Is he the one that does like, mm -hmm. and it's just such luxurious looking animated food. Yeah. And this was just sort of like rigatoni yeah. and linguine. But it was just bare noodles. Again, children. It was like, yeah. Uh, there was no red sauce. There was no lasagna. There was no like carbonara. Like, I don't know. I definitely get all your criticisms. I just had a really nice time watching it. And Maybe that's, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's, and that's just what it was. Um, I, I and I did appreciate their designs. Again, my personal style, I would have bumped their ages up two or three years sure. and I would have made them a bit more 
like teen, mm -hmm. like a teen. Yeah. Well, yeah, just no, not so childish. Like yeah. I would have made them a little bit more glamorous. And but you're right. That's where it is like for kids. But that's the thing that that frustrates me so badly, because even I, I mean, especially something like Soul, which we both were very mediocre on. That's like kids can appreciate it. That mm -hmm. movie's not for kids. It's not for kids. That's existentially well, a lot. And even Onward is not necessarily, like, again, kids can appreciate it. That's not a, a movie for kids. And you're right. This movie felt very for kids. And, like, it's rated PG, and I don't know why. Yeah. It, it's, in that sense, it does sort of match up with Cars, because Cars is very for kids. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not, it's one of the lesser Pixar mm -hmm. movies. And I do still love Cars, too. I think the first Cars is really good. Yeah, well, like I said, because, I mean, I just found this. First of all, I found it predictable. Well, first of all, I was disappointed. I was let yeah. down by the story they weren't telling. And then I found the story they were telling to be predictable sure. in a way that I wasn't quite enjoying. Like, there were funny elements. And I I, I really liked their undersea world. Mm -hmm. I loved the sheep fish for some reason. Giuseppe, what did we just talk about? Ah, oh, Giuseppe. So funny. The bleed Giuseppe. He yeah. Was, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> and he just kept trying to like run away. So funny. <laughs> I thought that that was. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just I I, I wanted. I want more. <laughs> yeah, it's the kind of thing that I mean, I don't know. I was going to say if they did a sequel with this, I might be more into it. Take like a Harry Potter route. Let's go to school and let them get older. And the stakes get higher. And yeah, but do you want to sit through fantasy. two more movies of that before, <laughs> before you get it gets, there? Before it gets because like... <laughs> I remember, and this is less creepy when you remember that I was way closer to the age when it happened. Sure, but I remember when the Harry Potter kids started getting hot, yeah. and it was like it was like uh, the Goblet of Fire, where you're like, oh, yeah, where they all have like stupid long hair, but you still are like, ah, I see it. And I was 17, yeah. so it's... <laughs> we were very close to their ages. I mean, we were very close to their ages in real life. We're about five years. Yeah. yeah, within five years. So I did like the two old... Like, I kind of expected for there to be more monsters. Than just the two, yeah. And then a part of me was like, please let the entire the village... The whole town? The entire village. But then why would they be hunting them? Because they have to keep up the charade. Because oh, they all just... think they're the only one. Oh, that would be funny. Sure, <laughs> sure. It just it was it was just half it was half baked. It was this was absolutely a free streaming on Disney. Yeah. Well, what's so funny is that apparently the Pixar team was like really mad and disappointed that it went straight to streaming because theaters are open now and they were like, we don't feel like Disney is taking us seriously. And to that, I'm sort of like, well, don't make three half baked movies in a mm -hmm. row and maybe we will take you more seriously again. But I, that's the thing is like, even as much as I did end up enjoying onward and I've watched it twice since we saw it in the theater, it is, but it is onward, not 100% there. Well, on, onward was Disney. I don't think it was Pixar. No, it was. Okay. Yeah. Because the, all the whole time we were like, if you're going to give a, like for the Oscars this year, we were like, if you're going to give a Pixar movie, the Oscar, make it Onward. And everybody well, was like, soul. Even Onward, I thought was weirdly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like, it was like my, the, that literally yeah. half baked. The father thing was so strange. Yeah. Well, that but that what I'm saying is like, uh -huh. it's my favorite of these uh, three yeah, yeah, yeah. that have come out. And even that is like, eh, you know, so it is just like, yeah, it's it's disappointing. I still had a really good time watching this. I feel like you're in a solid B plus. Like. Yeah, no, yeah, B plus for sure. I'm not, this is nowhere near A level territory mm -hmm. for Pixar movies for me. That's reserved for Up and Finding Nemo and Wally -E and Inside Out. I kind of want a figure of one of them, but again, I, I wish they were older or one of them had like an older sister or something. We don't know their girl in this scenario. We don't? No. Well. <laughs> I didn't like Julia either. She was kind of a lot. I didn't the the Santa cheese every time. Like, I was like, <laughs> I thought that was silly. kind of funny. It was sort of funny, <laughs> but it was like, <laughs> but it was like, what a weird thing for no real reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, Plus, it just made me want to eat cheese, and they and didn't, pasta, and they didn't put any of that cheese on the no. pasta. <laughs> It was this it was just incompetence on parade. No, 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 no. <laughs> it was not that bad. Uh, people love it. 89% yeah. of Rotten Tomatoes, 86% audience score. So sorry I, well, to the new people coming in. We can't wait. Can't wait for our Cruella and our <laughs> So okay, that's what I'll say is 
it's I think it's a similar thing. And for a long time, I drank the Kool-Aid, but I think it's a similar thing to Cruella where it's like, but this is a Pixar movie, so it's automatically good. And it's I, I want for more people to be able to think a little more critically about it and be like, well, just because I liked it doesn't mean it's excellent. <laughs> You know what I mean? And I can write. I liked it a lot. I, I like I don't I like think bunions. it was excellent. It doesn't yeah. mean it's excellent. Definitely not. excellent. <laughs> onion rings are excellent. Funyuns are trash. Be- beer battered onion yeah. rings like from like a Jewish deli. Like, Ooh. <laughs> Let's get two J's. You want to order <laughs> get two J's tomorrow again? If you loved it, I love that. Yeah, you. no, I'm, and... I certainly don't think there's anything wrong with loving this movie. I just I wanted a little bit more mm-hmm. from it. And I mean, again, I don't think it was too long or too short, but it was an hour and 40 minutes. And like, we could have done something more. We did reach a point where we paused it and I thought it was almost over and there was 50 full minutes left. And I was like, holy shit. (laughs) But okay, I keep wanting to say at the top of the episodes uh, to follow us on social and check out our Patreon. Yes. We want to do more with the Patreon, but we're not entirely sure what that is yet. So I have some ideas. And we're, we're uh, apparently my brother has a friend who's like actually successful <laughs> and <laughs> makes money and does social media stuff. Yeah. And he was like telling me things to do. And I'm like, I'm so not good at that. But apparently we're supposed to be telling people to like and subscribe. We have a goal. We need to get 10 likes on this video. And then we need 12 likes on the next video. We're supposed to be doing all of that stuff that like, oh. yeah, to get people to like. He was like, you got to tell people what to do. They're not just going to do it. And I was like, Ugh. that's the stuff I hate. About- <laughs> yeah, that's what I don't like. So <laughs> it's not even that I hate doing it. It's the stuff I hate about other people's YouTube channels. <laughs> so I like. Let's make Rachel do it for us. We'll have a little like commercial. A little, oh, ooh. Where it'll okay. be like, okay. hey, guys. <laughs> yeah. All right. Change approved. Well, we're at it. We'll do it. Like and subscribe. So, yeah. Well, our social media is at so I'm watching or at so I'm watching this show everywhere. We also have a website, so I'm watching.com, which links out to everything, including the Patreon, which is uh, so uh, patreon.com slash so I'm watching this show. Um, and we are going to start doing some stuff for that. We'll just have to keep you guys posted what it is. But um, you we can, have like an entire yeah, backlog. Re- well, backlog. Yes. But we have an entire uh, reaction, like recap to season one of Dawson's Creek that we yeah. have yet to do anything with. So. I was going to put that there and I've got some ideas, but we've got a bunch of 911, Riverdale, uh-huh. um, the boys, I think magicians, the magicians, a lot of stuff's on there. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you can join for as little as a dollar and you get all the videos. So, um, definitely, you know, do that if you want. And the higher you go, you might get a copy of the book we wrote. Uh, yeah. So other than that, you can, um, like and subscribe below. <laughs> okay, you're cut off. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.